Hello everyone, it's Mark here. Now today's little video, I'm going to show you how to make square stitch incorporating these amazing beadsmith symbols findings. It's an amazing range and what I love about them is they incorporate so well into your beaded projects. They finish beautifully, you can be able to embellish using these substitute beads. The beads I'm using today are called, if I just hold one up, they're like little mushrooms. And these are for using with your Ato seed beads. And they're like a little mushroom with a drill hole through the bottom. And that drill hole is the, exactly the same size as an Ato seed bead. And they've got this amazing domed top. And these are called Kaimo substitute beads. So I'm going to be using those. And the clasp at the end I'm going to be using are these amazing Art Nouveau style fans. And these are called Citia. So they incorporate again a nice little way of incorporating that into your end of your beading. Again, this is a perfect Ato replicate. And then we've got a little loop at the end here which we can then attach a clasp of our choice. So that's the Citia clasp endings and the Kaimo bead substitutes which we're going to use today. So I'll just pop those to one side. So as I've just mentioned, we're going to be using Ato seed beads and I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration on how to do square stitch, which is quite a new stitch to me actually as well. So I've taken a piece of white fire line and staple size 12 needle and I'm going to pick up, because I want to incorporate my clasp in the end, and I want to make sure that my beads sit perfectly either side. So I'm going to pick up three of my Atos and I'm going to go for this ivory colour. So one, two, three. And as you probably spotted, I popped a stopper bead on the end of my thread. Leave about a six inch tail at the end in a, in a completely different colour so you don't incorporate it into the design. So I've picked up three of my ivory. Then I'm going to pop through my clasp. So I'm going to slide that through. As you can see that sits beautifully underneath the fan. And then I'm going to pick up another three of the ivory. Then I'm going to slide it down. So as you can see, I now have three either side and the fourth in the middle is the bead substitute or the end of the clasp. So square stitch is a really nice little simple technique. It's very similar to peyote, but you do it on the square rather than on the brick, on the diagonal. So if you if you envisage like a, say like a bead loom pattern, but you're doing one bead at a time instead of rows. So you can do a most amazing symmetrical patterns using this. So I'm exiting through the top bead. I'm going to pick up my next bead, same colour, and I'm going to take my needle round and back up through the same bead that I'm exiting. So what happens is this bead will sit nice and neatly next door to its neighbour. Then I'm going to go down that bead that we've just added, and I'm going to pick up my next ivory, and I'm just going to go to the left and take my needle up through the second bead, just that second bead. I'm going to pull that across, make sure I don't get my tail caught, like so. And what you want to do is you want to take your thread across so it sits in between the two rows, and then take your needle down through, pull nice and tight. So you can already see the square stitch is starting to form. Let's tighten that up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to do the next one. So I'm going to pick up an eight. I'm going to go across just through that third bead. Bring my thread across so it sits. And already that thread is automatically wanting to sit across. I'm going to go down through that next row, pull nice and tight. And I'm going to pick up my fourth. Now this time, the bead is the bead substitute that's our part of the clasp. So we're going to treat that as an eight. So I'm going to go across, I'm going to take my needle up through the eight. I'm going to pull, so that sits nice and neatly. Again, it's the thread has come across, so I'm going to go down through the bead, and then we're back to bead on bead again. So I'll just finish this row. So we're going to go across, so the bead sits underneath. I'm going to go down, so it's facing me. Just tighten up that little stopper bead. I'm going to do number six, so I'm going to go across. Pull that nice and tight. The thread, after a while the thread automatically does what 
you want it to do, which is part of the joy of this little technique. And I'm coming to do the last one. So I'm taking my bead, I'm going up from the bottom to the top, pulling the thread across, and then I'm going down. So that's the second row. Now what I do at each row, especially because we're using eight O's, is I take my thread and I just go back up through the entire first row, pulling nice and tight, and then I come back down the second row. So this is adding a bit of strength and a bit of substance to your work. So just give it a little bit of a, a wiggle through. There we go. So there you have your second row. Now you can either continue with your next row from the bottom, or what I do is I just flip it over and repeat the same down the other side. So I'll just do a couple on here. So I'm going to go across to start the next row. So this time I'm going to change colour. So I'm going to pick up a green. I'm going to go up through that first bead. So this now sits nice and neatly alongside. I'm going to go down through that bead I've just added. I'm going to pick up the next. I'm going to go across just through that bead. Bring it across nice and neatly. See, automatically the, the uh, thread wants to sit in between those two green beads. And then I'm going to take that across. Okay, so we're just going to continue now with your pattern. So I'm just going to pop this to one side and I'll bring across a piece that I've already started. So as you can see, I'm aiming for a square pattern. So there are first two rows of ivory then the green, and what I'm doing is I'm doing a concentric circle, so I'm going in, the, in to have a little frame, okay? So I'm on them on the next row, but this time I'll add in the center one of my little substitute beads, okay? So we're starting at the top, so I'm adding a green, so I'm going to go up through the green, which will bring it onto the outside. Then this time it's going to be a cream, because I'm following that pattern. This is a joy of square stitch. You can come up with the most amazing patterns just jot jotting them down on, onto squared paper. Okay, so that's this one here. Then a green. I'm just going to slide that through. I'm going to go down through this. And this time we're going to add the substitute bead. So I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to slide it down. And what you just need to be, be aware of is you have a distinct top and a distinct bottom to your clasp. So obviously the pattern side is going to be uppermost. So you need to make sure at this point that you just position that little chimo bead so that the dome is facing up in the same direction. Okay, so we've slid that on. We're going to go across to the bead on the left to do exactly the same thing we're going to do. But you're, as I said, you're just treating it as though it was a, a bead. So I'm going to take my thread up and across, make sure that sits, and then go down through the hole of that chimo bead. So that is now locked it into position. Obviously, you're, when you come to do the second row, you can manipulate it. So I'm going to do the green. I'm going to go across, through the green, like so. Take the thread across exactly the same way, and then I'm going to go down and to do the white. Again, Atos is a lovely way to learn this technique because it's, it's got quite a lot of wiggle room. Okay, and then I'll do the green just to finish off this row. So we're going to then go across and down. And then as I mentioned just previously, you then would go up and back down just to strengthen your, your, um, your rows. So if I flip it over, you can see now that the end of that little little chimo bead acts as a bead in the center. It's perfectly formed. This is why I love these symbol ranges. I think they're absolutely extraordinary. Okay, so if I bring the next little piece across, I can show you how it sits. So that's how it's sitting in the, uh, in the scheme of things. Okay, so that's the top, that's the dome side. If I just turn that, you can see the dome. And then on the back, you see the bead, so it, it's not obtrusive, it doesn't stick into the wrist, it is exactly the same as an Ato bead. Okay, so we're gonna come to do the, add the second part of the clasp now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it over because I like to work towards me, and we're going to pick up one. So that sits on the side. Okay, then 
one second. Bring it across. And then number three. This will just give it a bit of a, a wiggle. in position. Okay, slide that across and go down. Okay, and now we're coming to add our second part of our fan. Now just be aware, as I mentioned earlier, about popping it the right way up, okay? So if we went ahead and did it this way, you'd have one part of the clasp facing each way. Now, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew down through the back like so. And then I'm going to take my needle up through the corresponding bead, its neighbor as it were. Okay, make sure that's sat in nice and neatly. So that then slides across, you go down exactly the same way. Okay, it catches it nice and neatly. And then we'll just continue the row. And obviously your, um, your design would be a lot longer than this one. And then we'll do the last bead just to finish it off. Like so. And then what I would do then, I definitely recommend, is with your needle, I would then just go up and down, up and down, up and down, and then cut off your thread because you won't you won't need that thread now because everything's interlocked, so I can cut that off. And then the same the other end, because we've gone over and over and over, we can just slide off that stopper bead. We don't need to do anything with it. And we can cut our thread off. Okay, so all that remains to do now is to decide on a clasp. So I've gone for a good old stay called toggle and a couple of jump rings. And all we're going to do is open our jump ring, take half of our clasp, and then use the substantial loop that we've got on the end of our clasp just to attach. So you'd repeat that the other side with your second half of your clasp. And there you have your Sitia and Kaimo embellishments and clasp alongside your square stitch seed beading. But as I said, just, just spend a bit of time making sure that your clasp endings and your substitute beads are facing the same direction because you don't want to get the end of your piece of work and find that you've got odd ends. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.